Welcome back to another edition of MacBreak Studio. We're continuing our discussion of 3D titles in Final Cut Pro 10.2 and Motion 5.2. And today we're going to look at a really cool 3D effect where we try to, where he's going to show us how to track 3D text in Final Cut. We know we can do this yes. in Motion, but he's going to yes. show us yes. how to do it in Final Cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so here's an example, and then we'll see. I'm going to try to bu build this live. But uh, this is an idea of 3D text inside a video clip and uh, having it be part of the scene. So here's a little sample I'll play right here. Uh, this is a shot of Vegas where we were recently for NAB, and we've got this Vegas text flying in space as the camera moves. He needs a, needs a through that. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> okay. By the way, it's a nice shot of Vegas. Yeah. Did, did so, you shoot oh, that? No, no, no. So this is to give credit to uh, Artbeats.com. That's a beautiful Artbeats shot. Has, uh, given us some great material for, for this and that we used in Vegas actually to do this kind of thing. So how can you do something like this? So this is um, fun to do. So what I'm going to do, I have another copy of the same clip here. I'm going to hit X to uh, set a range for it. And I'm going to do the titles inspector and I'm using, let me slide over here, I'm using one of our Ripple 3D title styles to do this. You could use any 3D text, but I like to use these 3D title styles. And I'm going to search for one that has gold. I'm just going to type gold because I want a kind of golden look. And there's two. There's this one here that looks pretty nice. And I like this one because it's got some neat edge detail on it. So I'm going to select it and press Q to connect it to that clip. And now I'm going to make a few changes to it to make it a little more uh, appropriate because right now it has reflections of trees very clearly, which <laughs> yes. we're in Vegas. <laughs> there's trees like in the air. That. So I'm going to turn off the super size. I'll leave the same font assignment. I'll, I'll type Vegas. And I'll also change, oh, there's something else I believe I want to change here. I'm going to cheat and look at my notes real quick. I'm going to turn off the build in and build out so it doesn't animate by default mm -hmm. and get rid of those. I'm also going to turn the blur for the background off. I don't want it to automatically blur the background in this case. So I'm going to change the environment and so we don't have those trees. I'll go down to the uh, environment section and instead of this field, I'm going to choose this light box. So um, I don't have those trees. It's that a little bit crazy. Looks okay. <laughs> so it still looks kind of cool. Yeah. Now um, I could also r rotate that environment to get a little bit of uh, light showing. There's a little too much in there. Uh, I don't want to do that. Let's open up the environmental rotation and choose another parameter. I just want to get a little bit of light in there. It's a little too much. You're just trying to uh, find the right portion of the environment yeah, where it brightens yeah, it up a bit. Really yeah. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so now how do, I, how do I have it match the scene? I'm not really tracking. What I'm trying to do is really kind of guesstimate the motion because this is floating in space. It doesn't sure. have to, it's not, you know, sit, sitting an, on an object. Right, it's not, right. there's no object. So there. I'm gonna take it first. I'm gonna move it back in space. I'm gonna start with it kind of far away. I'm kind of lining it up roughly with the uh, building over here. I don't know if you it's know the which. Venetian, the I Venetian, Venetian, okay. And also I could tilt it it doesn't have very much thickness, so I'm going to give it a little bit more extrusion, uh, which is right here, the depth parameter. So we make it a little bit thicker. I'll probably make it about 40 there. And then I think I'll actually tilt it down, and there it starts to catch a little light. Yeah. And maybe I'll rotate it a little as well, uh, just so it's on some kind of angle, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm starting there, and I'll go to the beginning of the project here, and I'm going to set keyframes because this is one of our... 3D title styles. You can do it right there in the same pane. I can I can set keyframes. Right. You can't keyframe position and scale sure. for the for the built-in ones, but you can here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keyframe position and scale. And then what I'll do is I'll move forward in time. I'll do about here. And now I want to change it. Now the trick is I, I really want to change it uh, in the inspector, okay? Because if I change position in the viewer by dragging on these position arrows, it won't set a keyframe. It's just kind of a funny thing about how Final Cut works with 3D text. So I really need to do it over here. So for position, I'm going to drag it in X to come way forward. Uh, and resolution. actually, before I go all the way, I might actually also tilt it a little bit in Y because the camera tilts a little bit. I'm going to tilt it a little bit so we get some of that reflection, reflection to come up. And then I'm going to have it come right all the way through. And it's not coming out right where I want, so I'll also move it up a little bit. Or I'll move it to the side a little bit. So yeah, kind of you want to go shoot, through, yeah, you want to go through, kind of through shoot, the letters, yeah. Shoot through the letters. Okay, so shoot through like that. Yeah. Great. So I've set keyframes, and I can play that back and see if I like how that looks. And, you know, already <laughs> that's, that's not bad, right? Not that's bad. pretty good. Pretty good. It seems a little slow at first, and that's because these keyframes, if I press Control-V and zoom in here and select just the position keyframes, 
and right click on that first keyframe, uh -huh. it's smooth by default. So the, the, it's ramping up the speed, but the camera's moving at a kind of a constant, constant rate. rate. Yeah. yeah, so I want to change this to linear here. And I'll also change the, the outgoing one to linear, although it's off the camera by this point. Sure. And by the way, you can, we can't do that with rotation. Rotation keyframes, if I select those, are they are what they are. Right. Yeah, I think they're smooth by default, but you can't change them. You'd uh, like and to the, see that change yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so I'll go back to all. Yeah, it would be nice to be able to do that with. So if I do that, I get a little better, kind of it's moving already to constant speed. And seems to be moving pretty much with the, uh, with the camera moving through the scene. Yeah. Okay. It has that feel to it. Definitely yeah. has that feel. Now, because moving position doesn't automatically set a keyframe, that forces us to do the inspector. But what's cool in the viewer, if I don't really like this framing, I'm free to change the position right, of the it doesn't text. Add, it doesn't add a keyframe. It's not going to add a That's, keyframe. So that maybe comes in that handy is there. Very handy. Yeah. I don't want to mess with until this. Apple changes it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to so handy. <laughs> I don't want to mess with rotation <laughs> right, here because right, if, if I rotate, it's right. going to set a keyframe. But I'm free to adjust position to get a better position if I want something a little. Uh, you know, if I want to change where it's flying through. That's, that looks great. There we go. So pretty, pretty cool. I, I, I'll go back to the other one and see how I did. The other one, I changed the color a little bit too. Right. And I was careful not, when I fly through, not to get too close. Because it gets super close to the text. It looks sort of a little funny on the edge there. Yeah. But you can pretty quickly, you can see how you can track. It's not really tracking. It's kind of faking it. But it does a really good job. And there's many times we want text floating in space. Right. Over a city, uh, in, in, in the sky, whatever, yeah. and it really gives the sense of that 3D text being in the environment because it's got environmental reflections. That's right, and you, you could give the sense of you're, flo you're, you're flying through it with yes, the camera. Yes, yes, and it doesn't have to be like a perfect tracking, but it looks really cool. Well, you've just given, given thousands of people watching the show the permission to now do that. Yes, so go for it. Let's see it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else good. you wanted to show? Or? No, I think, that's, uh, I think that's good. All right, excellent, excellent. Well... <laughs> We're continuing our exploration of the amazing 3D title tool in Final Cut Pro 10.2. You'll definitely want to check out his full motion training because he covers amazing uh, techniques, what you can do with light, shadows, reflections, building environments. And so you can actually do real tracking. He shows you that. Um, check out his plugins, uh, of which there are many, and you make sure you download the free version of the uh, Ripple animations. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, we'll see you next time on another exciting edition of MacBreak Studio. <laughs>